Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's three weeks or 21 days to go into your GCSE Maps exam and today we're going to be focused on the topic of surface area. So we're going to be looking at how to find the surface area of solids such as cuboids and other prisms and we're also going to be looking at how to find the surface areas of spheres and things like that. So in this video we're going to look at surface area. I'm going to go through some of the key information you need to know for finding the surface area of solids and then also be some questions for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at surface area. So we're going to find the total surface area of some shapes. So here we've got a cuboid and we want to work out the surface area of this cuboid. So if you know how to work out the surface area of a cuboid, feel free to press pause now and work out the surface area of this cuboid. Otherwise, I'm going to go through this one and then there's going to be one for you to try afterwards. So here we've got a cuboid and we want to find the area of all its faces. Now, thinking of a dice, it's got six faces. So a cuboid will also have six faces. Thinking of perhaps like a, a box of cornflakes or something like that. You're going to have the front, the back, the top, the bottom and the left side and the right side. So in terms of this cuboid, we've got the rectangle on the front, the rectangle on the top, the rectangle on the back, the rectangle at the bottom, the rectangle on the right, and the rectangle on the left. Now the great thing is some of those rectangles will have the same areas. So let's start off with the rectangle on this right hand side here. We've got five centimeters and seven centimeters. So five multiplied by seven will be equal to 35 centimeters squared. And that's the area of the face on the right hand side of that cuboid. Or I'm just going to write it there, 35. So that's 35 centimeters squared. So if we know the area of this rectangle here, that's going to be the same as the area of the rectangle on the other side. So the area of the rectangle on this left hand side would also be 35 centimeters squared. So I'm just going to write that down again, 35 centimeters squared. That's the area of the rectangle on the left hand side of the cuboid because the area of the rectangle on the right hand side would be the same as the area of the rectangle on the left hand side. Okay, now let's do the top. So in terms of the rectangle on the top, well, this length here is eight centimeters and the length of this bit here is equal to seven centimeters, seven centimeters because it's the same as this one. So eight times seven will give us the area of the rectangle rectangle on the top of this cuboid. So we're going to do 8 multiplied by 7 is equal to 56 centimeters squared. So the area for the top of this cuboid is 56 centimeters squared. So that's the top. Now that's fantastic. We know the area of the rectangle on the top of the cuboid. That's going to be the same as the area of the rectangle on the bottom of the cuboid. So it's going to be 56 centimeters squared as well. So I'm just going to write that down again. 56 centimeters squared. And that's the bottom. And then finally, let's find the area of this rectangle, the front of the cuboid. So in terms of this rectangle, as we know, it's got a length of eight centimeters and the height of it here will be equal to five centimeters. So we're gonna do eight times five. So eight multiplied by five is equal to 40 centimeters squared. So the area of the rectangle on the front of the shape is 40 centimeters squared. And that means the area of the rectangle on the back of the cuboid would also be 40 centimeters squared. So that's fantastic. We now know the area of all six faces. So 40 centimeters squared, that's the front and that's the back. So that's fantastic. We now know the area of all six faces of this cuboid. And then to find the total surface area, we can just add them up and that'll give us our total surface area. So let's do that. So we're gonna do 35 plus 35 plus 56 plus 56 plus 40 plus 40. Some people do 35 plus 56 plus 40 and then just get that answer and double it. But I'm just gonna add them all up here because I've listed them anyway. And that's equal to 262 centimeters squared. So that's the total surface area of this cuboid. And this is part of the code miles revision card. So if you've got the code miles revision cards, there's a card on surface area and I'll go through this question for you and you'll see there it's also got a surface area of 262 centimeters squared and if you got that well done okay so that's one we've gone through together now let's have a look at one for you to try so here we've got a cuboid can you work out the total surface area of this cuboid so press pause now and work out the total surface area of this cuboid Okay, so if we want to work out the total surface area of this cuboid, let's find the area of all six faces. So let's start off with this right-hand side. It's six centimeters times 10 centimeters. So six times 10 is 60 centimeters squared. So that's six multiplied by 10 is equal to 60 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the rectangle on the right-hand side of the cuboid, and that'll be the same as the area of the rectangle on the left-hand side of the cuboid. So that'll also be 60 centimeters squared. So let's write that down. Okay, now let's have a look at the top here. So in terms of the top, this is eight centimeters, and then this is 10 centimeters, so that's eight centimeters there, and that's 10 centimeters there. So we're gonna do eight times 10, and eight times 10 is 80 centimeters squared. So the area of the top, eight multiplied by 10, is equal to 80 centimeters squared. So that's the top, and that would also be the same as the bottom, so 80 centimeters squared for the bottom as well. 
to the bottom is also 80 centimeters squared. So that's the top and the bottom, the right hand side and the left hand side. Now we just need to do the front and the back. So in terms of the front and the back, well, in terms of the front, it's eight centimeters wide and it's six centimeters high. If this is six, this would be six. So we're gonna do eight times six. And eight times six is equal to 48 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the rectangle on the front of this cuboid. So that's the front, but it would also be the back as well. So 48 centimeters squared. So let's do those as well. Okay, now we just need to add them up and see what we get. So if we do 60 plus 60 plus 80 plus 80 plus 48 plus 48, that's equal to 376 centimeters squared. And if you got that, well done. So we've had a look at how to find the surface area of cuboids. So again, the area of all of those six faces and add them up. Let's have a look at another prism. So here we've got a triangular prism. And as you can see, it's a right angle triangle here. And we've been asked to work out the surface area of this triangular prism. So we're gonna to need to find the area of all five faces. So we've got the front, the back, the bottom, the right hand side, this slanted one here, and the left hand side, this vertical one here. So let's find the area of all five faces. So let's start off with the front, and as you can see, it's a triangle. And to find the area of a triangle, we do half the base times the height. So we're gonna do half of four times three. So we're gonna do half of the base, which is four, and we're gonna multiply that by three. And a half of four is two, and two times three is equal to six. That's six centimeters squared. So that's six centimeters squared. So the area of this triangle on the front will be six centimeters squared. So you could have done half of four, which is two, and then two times three is six, or you could have done three times four is 12, and then half it to be six, so that's six centimeters squared. And if the front is six centimeters squared, because it's a prism, the back would have to be the same as well. So it's gonna be six centimeters squared as well. Okay, so we've done the front and the back. Okay, now let's have a look at the bottom. So in terms of the bottom, well, it's a triangular prism and it's going to be a rectangle on the bottom and it's going to be four centimeters wide and 12 centimeters long. So if we do four multiplied by 12, that's equal to 48 centimeters squared. So the area of the rectangle on the bottom of this triangular prism will be 48 centimeters squared. So let's write that down, 48 centimeters squared. And that's the bottom. Okay, so we've done the front, the back, and the bottom. Now let's have a look at this right-hand side. So this is a rectangle here. This face is a rectangle, and it's 12 long and 5 wide. So if we do 12 multiplied by 5, 12 multiplied by 5, that's equal to 60 centimeters squared. So that means the area of this rectangle is 60 centimeters squared. So we found the area of four of the faces, the bottom, the front, the back, and this right-hand side. Now we just need to find the area of this rectangle on the left-hand side. So this face on this left-hand side will be a rectangle. In terms of its length, it would be 12 long and in terms of its height it's three high so it's 12 by three and if we do 12 multiplied by three that's equal to 36 centimeters squared so the area of this face on the left hand side of this triangular prism will be 36 centimeters squared so let's write that down 36 centimeters squared so this 60 was the right hand face the right hand face and then this 36 centimeters squared is the left hand face left hand face so now we just need to add them up we've got the area of all five faces let's add them up and get the total area and that's equal to 156 centimeters squared. And that's it, that's the total surface area of that triangular prism. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so I've had a look at finding the total surface area of cuboids and triangular prisms and shapes like that. Now let's have a look at cylinders. So this is a cylinder and we wanna work out the surface area, the total surface area of the cylinder. So if you want to have a go at that, feel free to press pause and to try that yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go through this one, and then there's no one for you to try in a minute yourself if you want to do that. So in terms of finding the total surface area of the cylinder, we're going to need to find the area of the circle on the top, the area of the circle on the bottom, and then we need to find the area of this curved face going round. Now, if you watch the Corp Mass video on surface area of a cylinder, you'll see I take a uh, toilet roll, and I cut that toilet roll vertically, and then I lay it out flat, and you see it's a rectangle. So if you were to take this curved face here, if you were to actually cut it vertically and lay it out flat, this face would be a rectangle. And in terms of that rectangle, the length of the rectangle will be the circumference of the circle, and the width of that rectangle will be the height of the cylinder. So if we want to find the area of this curved face, what we're going to do is we're going to find the circumference of the circle and multiply that by six, and that'll tell us the area of that curved face. Okay, so let's start by finding the area of the circle. So in terms of the area of the circle, we're going to use pi r squared for that. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius, which is five squared. So whenever we do pi times five squared, that's 25 pi, or as a decimal number, 78.53981634 meters squared. So that'll be the area of the top of the cylinder and also the area of the bottom of the cylinder. Now in terms of the curved face, remember it's a circumference multiplied by the height of the cylinder, because that's going to be a rectangle and it's going to be if you were to cut it and to lay it out flat, the length of it will be the circumference of the circle and the width of it will be the height of the cylinder. So let's do that. So let's find the circumference of the circle. So it's going to be pi times diameter. So it's going to be pi multiplied by the diameter of the circle. 
and the diameter of the circle would be 10 because halfway across the radius is 5 meters so the whole way across would be 10. So pi times 10 would be the circumference of the circle. Now we just need to multiply it by the height of the cylinder which is 6 so multiply by 6 and whenever we do that we get 60 pi or that as a decimal number is equal to 188.4955592 meters squared. So that's the area of that curved face. So if we want to find the total surface area of the cylinder, what we need to do is do the top plus the bottom plus that curved face. So it's going to be 78.5398 and so on, plus 78.5398 and so on, plus the 188.4955 and so on. And when we do that, we get an answer of 110 pi or 345.5751919 meters squared. And you could round that. If we were to round that to three decimal places, the three decimal places, that'll be 345.575 meters squared. So that's the surface area of that cylinder to three decimal places. Okay, so that's, that's one that I've done for you. Now I would like you to have a go yourself. Here we've got a cylinder. Can you find the total surface area of the cylinder? Okay, so if we want to find the total surface area of the cylinder, we need to get the area of the circle on the top, the area of the circle on the bottom, and that curved surface, so that, cur that area of that curved surface around the outside of the cylinder. So in terms of the top, we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius of the circle. So the whole way across the circle is 14 centimetres, so the radius halfway across would be 7 centimetres. So we're going to do pi times 7 squared. That'll be the area of the circle on the top, and then that'll be the same as the bottom. So that's going to be 49 pi, or as a decimal number, that's going to be equal to... 153.93804 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the circle on the top and the area of the circle on the bottom. So we'll use that twice for the top and the bottom. Now in terms of the curved face. So in terms of the curved face, that's going to be the circumference of the circle multiplied by the height of the cylinder. So in terms of the circumference of the circle, that's going to be pi times diameter. So that's going to be pi times 14. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of the cylinder. So it's going to be multiplied by 16. Because remember, it's a rectangle. If we were to lay it out flat, the length of the rectangle would be the circumference of the circle and the width of the rectangle will be the height of the cylinder. So whenever we do pi times 14 times 16 that's equal to 224 pi or 703.7167544 centimeters squared. So that's the area of that curved face going around the outside of the cylinder. So if we want to find the total surface area of the cylinder, we're going to do 153.938 and so on, plus 153.938 and so on. That's the top and the bottom, plus that curved face, which is 703.7167 and so on. And when we add that all up, we get an answer of 322 pi or 1011.592834 centimeters squared and that's the curved surface area of that cylinder and if you got that well done okay so we've had a look at how to find the surface area of cylinders of cuboids of other prisms such as triangular prisms okay so let's look at how to find the surface area of a sphere so the surface area of a sphere is found by 4 pi r squared so if we want to find the surface area of a sphere we just do 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared so we do the radius squared and multiply that by 4 pi and that give you the surface area of sphere now what's fantastic is that formula is given to you, so we just need to be able to use it. So feel free to press pause and find the surface area of the sphere now. Okay, so to do that, the radius of the sphere, well, the diameter of the sphere is equal to 18 centimetres, so the radius halfway across would be 9 centimetres. So we're going to do 4 multiplied by pi, multiplied by the radius, which is 9, halfway across is 9 centimetres, so 9 squared. Now, if this was a non-calculator question, you would do 9 squared is equal to 81. You'd multiply that by 4, and then it'd be that number of pi, and that'd be your answer. Now, if this is a calculator question, we can just type it in 4, multiply by pi, multiply by 9 squared, and that's equal to 324 pi. So 324 pi, or as a decimal number, that would be equal to 1017.87602 centimeters squared so the surface area of the sphere would be 1017.87602 centimeters squared and that's it and if it was a non-calculator question you would do 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by 9 squared 9 squared is 81 you just do then 81 times 4 which is 324 and then just put the pi after it and then it will be centimeters squared would be the units for that but if it's a calculator question you can just type it in and then you get your answer and that's it and if you got that well done okay let's have a look at another one so here we've got another sphere can you find the surface area of that sphere Okay, so remember the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared, so we're just going to do 4, multiply by pi, multiply by the radius of the sphere, so in this case that is 5 centimetres, so 5 
squared. Now, if it's a non-calculator question, you do 5 squared is 25, and then times by 4 is 100, so the answer will be 100 pi centimeters squared. In this case, this is a calculator question, so we're going to do 4 multiplied by 5 squared, and that's equal to 100 pi, or 314 0.159 and so on centimeters squared and if you were to run that to two decimal places that'll be 314.16 centimeters squared and that's it and if you got that well done okay so we've had a look at how to find the surface area of cuboids of triangular prisms of cylinders um, and also of spheres now let's have a look at cones because you need to be able to find the surface area of a cone as well so to find the surface area of a cone, well, a cone's got two parts. If we want to find the total surface area of a cone, you need to find the area for the bottom of the cone, which would be pi r squared. It's a circle, so you just do pi r squared for the bottom of the cone. But in terms of the curved surface area, so that curved face going around the outside of the cone, the top of the cone here, you're going to do pi r l. And that formula is given to you for the curved surface area. If you need the total surface area, though, you need to remember to find pi r squared for the bottom and to add it on. But in terms of finding the area of this curved face, what you do is you do pi multiplied by the radius of the base, so in this case that'll be 8, multiplied by L, which is what we call the slant height. So not the perpendicular height, not the height of this, the cone, which is in this case 15 centimetres, what we call the slant height. So that's the from the top down to the edge, like so, that's 17 centimetres, and we call that L. So in terms of this uh, cone, if we want to find the total surface area of this cone, well, let's start off by finding the curved surface area, so the area of this curved surface at the top. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius, which is 8, so multiplied by 8, multiplied by L, which is the slant height, which is 17. So if we do pi times 8 times 17, that'll be the surface area of the top of the cone, this curved face. So let's do that. That's equal to 136 pi or 427 0.2566009 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the curved face. But if we wanted to find the total surface area of this cone, we also need to include the base, which is a circle. So we need to do pi r squared to find the area of that circle. So let's do that. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius, which is 8 squared. So 8 squared, pi r squared. And when we do that, we get 64 pi or 201.0619298 and so on centimeters squared. So in terms of this cone, we've now got the curved surface area, so at the top, and we've also got the area of the base of the cone, and now we just need to add them together, and that will give us the total surface area of this cone. So we would do 427.2566 and so on, plus 201.0619 and so on, and that's equal to... 200 pi or 628.318 and so on centimeters squared and that's it that would be the surface area of that cone the total surface area of that cone and you are given that curved surface area formula that pi r l that's pi times the radius times the slant height to get the curved surface area of the cone but remember if you need to find the total surface area of the cone to include the base as well so that's the question done for you now let's have a look at one for you to try yourself Okay, so I'm going to find the curved surface area to begin with. So in terms of the cone, that's the top of this cone here, this curved face. So we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius of the base, which is 6, multiplied by the slant height, which is 11. And when we do that, we get 66 pi, or as a decimal, that'll be 207 0.3451 and so on centimeters squared so that's the curved surface area of that cone now we want to find the total surface area so we need to also include the area of the base that circle so we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius which is 6 squared and when we do that we get 6 squared is 36 so 36 pi or as a decimal number that's equal to 113.09733 and so on centimeters squared and just remember you could just type that into your calculator if it's a calculator question you can just do pi times 6 squared and it'll give you 36 pi and you can just, just change it into a decimal number and now we want to find the total surface area so we just need to add these together and that'll give us a total surface area of this cone so we're going to take our 66 pi and add a 36 pi and see what we get or we can type in our 207.3451 and so on and obviously you write that whole thing in that's whatever you had there plus and then your 113.09733 and so on so let's do that so 113.09733 three and so on that's what i've got in my calculator display so i'm running that first plus our 207.3451 and so on or remember you could also type in 36 pi plus 66 pi and that's equal to 102 pi or as a decimal number 320.4424 and so on centimeters squared and that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through surface area. We've looked at how to find the surface area of cuboids and 
Double prism spheres and things like that. If you've got the Code Matters Revision cards, card number 91 will be a really useful one for you. It's on surface area. So that the Code Matters Revision card and surface area will be really useful as well. So keep up the hard work. You're doing really well. There's three weeks to go into your GCC Mavs exam. So big effort now between now and the exam. And hopefully you're going to do really, really well. So keep up the hard work. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers. Bye.